Hello scholars, welcome to today's Manuscript Spotlight. Today, we'll be examining what renowned biblical scholar Kurt Alland has called the most significant New Testament papyrus known to exist, Papyrus 75, also known as Hannah Papyrus 1. This manuscript contains most of the Gospels of Luke and John, and is believed to have been made in Egypt around 175 to 225 CE. Though recently, some scholars have argued for dating it as late as the early 4th century CE. This is a remarkably early dating for such a large portion of the Gospels to be preserved in a single manuscript. It was rediscovered in the 1950s, and was privately owned until 2006, when it was donated to the Vatican Library, where it resides today. While this manuscript has over 90% agreement with the Vatican Codex, which I've covered in a previous manuscript spotlight, it does have a few unique features I want to highlight while we read together. I don't want to give the impression that this is the norm, since the large majority of biblical manuscripts match each other very closely, especially when discounting obvious scribal mistakes. However, I usually find the differences interesting to examine, which is why I generally focus on where those differences do occur. My first reading today will be from Luke 24, 6-7, which you can find on page 2a.6v if you want to follow along. These words are spoken by two angels to the women who came to see Jesus' body before they knew that he had risen. This passage has an interesting feature I'll point out after I read it, but see if you can catch it before then. The manuscript reads, Uc estin ode ala egerthe mnestete os elalesen humin etion en tagalilaya Legon, ton wion tu anthropo hati de paradothenai aiskairas anthropon hamartalon kaistarothenai kai tetrite hemera anastenai. And for the translation, uk estin ode, he is not here, ala egerte, but he is risen. Mnestete hos elalesen humin. Remember how he spoke to you. Eti on en te Galilaya, While he was in Galilee. Legon ton wion to anthropo. Saying, the son of man. Hati de peredothenai. Must be delivered. Aiskairas anthropon hamartalon into the hands of sinful men, kaistarothenai, and crucified, kai tetrite hemera anastenai, and the third day to rise. Here we see the angel's joyful proclamation of Jesus' vindication and victory over death, sin, and the forces of evil by his resurrection from the dead. This news, along with Jesus' later appearances and the working of the Holy Spirit, would empower the early Christians to live transformed lives, spreading the good news of Jesus and the coming kingdom of God, eventually including to the community that would have read this manuscript just a few generations later. In addition to its historical and theological importance, I wanted to look at this passage because of an interesting symbol used here, known as a staurogram, which you can see in the Namana Sacra abbreviation for Staurothenai, meaning crucified. Stauros is the Greek word for cross, and a staurogram is a cross-shaped combination, or ligature, of the Greek letters tau and rho. This has been found in very early Christian manuscripts when referring to the cross or crucifixion in a reverential context. The staurogram is similar in form to the Cairo Christogram, which was more widely used, but probably developed after the Staurogram. I've linked to a paper detailing the interesting history of this little-known symbol, if you want to learn more. To close out, I'll be reading from John 10, 7-10. This chapter contains two of Jesus' seven I Am statements that John records, and if you follow along, you may notice some subtle differences from what you see in your Bible. The manuscript reads, Ipen un palin autois ha Jesus. Amen, amen, lego humin, hati ego aime e poimen ton probaton. Pantes hasoi elthon kleptai esin, kailestai, al uc ecusan auton 
taprobata. Ego aime hethua. Di emo eantis aiselthe sothesetai, kai aiseliusetai, kai exeliusetai, kai nomen yurese. Hakleptes uk erketai, eme hina klepse, kai thuse, kai apolese. Ego elthon hina zoen echosin, kai perison echosin. And now for the translation. Ipen un palin autois ha Jesus. So again, Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, lego humin. Truly, truly, I tell you. Hati ego aime he poimen, that I am the shepherd, ton probaton, of the sheep. Pantes hasoi elthon, all who came, kleptai aisin kailestai, are thieves and bandits. Al uk ekusan auton taprabata. But the sheep did not listen to them. Ego aimi hethura, I am the door. Di emu eyan tis aiselthe, if anyone enters by me, so thesetai, he will be saved. Kai aiseliusetai, kai exeliusetai, and will go in and will go out. Kai nomen yurese and find pasture. Hai kleptes uk erketai e me hina klepse. The thief does not come if not to steal. Kai thuse, kai apolese, and kill and destroy. Ego elthon hina zoen echosin. I have come that they may have life. Kai perison echosin, and may have it abundantly. One difference that's fairly well attested in other ancient manuscripts is the lack of the words before me in verse 8. The more unique difference is in verse 7, which reads, I am the shepherd of the sheep, instead of I am the gate of the sheep. This is the only known Greek manuscript with this reading, though it is found in some Coptic manuscripts. Of course, this substitution doesn't change the message much, since Jesus still says that he's both the shepherd and the gate in this manuscript, just in a different order than usual. I hope you've enjoyed reading this incredibly significant manuscript together and have been encouraged by what we've read. This week, I hope you can experience the power and resurrection of Jesus in your own life as you trust in him as the Good Shepherd. Thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, and I'll see you again on the next Manuscript Spotlight.